th 30th, 2020 Committee of the Whole to order. Would you please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United of, America States of America and to the republic, to the republic for, which for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with and, liberty justice and, and justice for all. Mr. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Will do. Alderman Redpath. Here. Alderman Gregory. Here. Alderman Turner. She's here. She's muted. Here. Sorry. Alderman Fulgenzi. Here. He's here. Alderman Proctor. Here. Alderman DeCenso. Present. Alderman Donnelly. Here. Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mr. Chairman, the quorum is present. Thank you. Um, Would we, I'd like to take a moment and have a, a moment of silence for the victims of the Bun tragedy. If you please join me, please. Thank you. Uh, I'll accept a motion for the approval of the June 9th, 2020 committee of the meetings. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. So moved. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Close the ayes have it. Are there any, Mr. Clerk, are there any presentations? Uh, no, Chairman. Not tonight. Okay. Next, we'll have, have ordinances tabled to remain in committee. Mr. Clerk, could you please read, read those ordinances? 2017, 103, 2018, 110, 2019, Next, we'll have ordinances tabled. 2019, 430-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020-2020
Do you want to text me or? Uh, no, I better not. Better not do that. <laughs> Does anybody know where Tom Chi is? We can hear you now. Is my audio? I have an answer here shortly. Yes. I can hear you, John. Sorry, guys. Yes. Yes, that'd be great. Go ahead. Somebody call a name or something? Yeah, I have a, it says uh, there's an update at, uh, from ISD and it took the sound off the TV. The audio on Facebook is working, but the uh, cable access is not. And I think that's what's creating the disruption with the older woman and uh, the council. Doc, can you hear Alderman me? Conley, she's trying to get your attention. Uh, Aaron, I can't. I I see you got your hand up. Maybe so, they can call in. Okay. Can can you hear can you me guys at all, call Chuck? In? Chuck? You can. Um, what if we we go to they can call each person? You go to Facebook. You can call into your cell maybe and hold your. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got it fixed. Yeah. Good job, okay. Tony. Okay, we'll revert back to Alderman Turner, I believe. Is, uh, <coughs> All right. All right. Stand by. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Hi, Nate. Okay, uh, Alderman Turner, if you can hear me, you can go ahead. No, I was just going to say I, I was going to alert you to the fact that um, we could not hear Joe, but that was it. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor to bring those off the uh, out of the committee for discussion. Is there a second? But which can you repeat the motion, please? We the didn't motion hear is it. to the motion is to pull 2020 158 through 164. 2020, 230, and 231. Is that correct, Alderman McMinima? 230. 235. And 235, Alderman Turner. Okay. Is there a second to pull those from the committee? Hearing no second, we'll move on to the next order of business. Uh, we'll now move to ordinances for committee consideration. Uh, Mr. Clerk, could you please read those ordinances? Yes, I will. CWLP 2020 In order to accept and bids and authorizing contract UE 20 01 82 Dolman Building Heat Replacements with E.L. Cruz Company Incorporated in amount not to exceed $335,973 for the Office of Public Utilities. Is there a motion? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we send ordinance 2020 236 onto the council with due pass recommendation for the consent agenda discussion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All aye. opposed? The ayes have it. 2020 237. In ordinance accepting and authorizing execution of contract UE 
CWLP FY21 Electric Underground Electric Rebuild with Escalon Construction LLC and amount not to exceed $587,401.03 for the Office of Public Utilities. Entertain a motion. Move, Move to consent, consent. McMiniman. It's moved and seconded for Second. consent. I'm sorry? Uh, we, it, it's been moved and seconded since 2020, 237 on the Council of Due Pass recommendation for the consent agenda discussion. Alderman Conley. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering if we could get a timeline for when this work will begin and how long it will take. John? The shoot work should start at the end of July and probably last through the fall, uh, be done by the first of the year. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Uh, just, uh, Mr. Chair and, and John, we may have simultaneous activity with that um, uh, internet company working in some of the same areas. So hopefully they'll coordinate, uh, both utilities will coordinate with each other uh, to avoid um, even greater uh, complications for our residents. I'll, I'll talk to our uh, engineers on, the, on this job to make sure that's done. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none of those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. 2020-238, an ordinance approving a professional services agreement with Northwater LLC to assist in excavating and managing the USDA-RCPP project for a five-year period in an amount not to exceed $68,000 for the Office of Public Utilities. Is there a motion? Is that second, McMiniman. It's been moved to second to send 2020-238 onto the Council of Due Pass Recommendation for the Consent Agenda Discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All aye. opposed? The ayes have it. 2020-239, an ordinance authorizing the purchase of a tandem axle wheel dump truck from Rush Truck Centers of Illinois Incorporated from a state contract in an amount not to exceed $119,703 for the Office of Public Utilities. Entertain a motion. Move to consent, McMiniman. Is there a second? Aye. We move second. and second that we send 2020-239 onto the council of due pass recommendation for consent agenda discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. 2020-240, an ordinance approving a contract extension amendment and authorizing additional funding in an amount of $220,000 with Ascend Performance Materials Operations, LLC, for the purchase of diabasic acid in a total amount not to exceed one million seven hundred and sixty thousand for the office of public utility entertain a motion move consent is there a second second it's been moved and second we send 2020 240 onto the council of due pass recommendations for the consent agenda discussion hearing no discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. aye. all opposed the ayes have it 2020-241, an ordinance authorizing payment to the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency in an amount not to exceed $294,000 for annual air pollution control, Title V permit fees for the Regulatory Affairs Division for the Office of Public Utilities. Entertain a motion. Move for to consent. amend. Excuse me, I didn't hear it. Move to amend. Uh, second the uh, motion to amend. It's been moved and second to amend. Uh, we have proposed amendment number one, Mr. Okay. Chair. I'd like to add that. So uh, make your motion for amendment. Make a motion to amend to uh, proposed amendment to add proposed amendment number one. Second. It's been moved and seconded. It's been moved and seconded to amend ordinance 2020-241. Uh, does everybody have the amendment? Uh, Alderman DeCenso, Conley, Turner, and Fragenza, you all have that? Yes, okay. yes. Does, uh, is there any discussion on the amendment? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Is there any further amendments? Moved to consent, to consent for uh, as amended. It's been moved and seconded to send 2020-241 uh, as amended onto the council with DUPAC pass recommendation for the consent agenda. Any further discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. 2020-242, an ordinance approving payment to Constellation New Energy Gas Division, LLC, in an amount not to exceed $1,800,525 for the purchase of natural gas through fiscal year 2021 under an existing contract for the Office of Public Utilities. Is there a motion? Move to consent. 
Is there a second? Second. It's been moved to second to send 2020-238 onto the council with due pass recommendation for the consent agenda discussion. I have discussion. Is this uh, part of the RFP that we've put out for, uh, is this for uh, backup uh, power for uh, the Dolmans? No, this is strictly for startup gas for one, two, three, and four. Uh, gas for interstate, so when it operates, we have gas to fuel that turbine. Okay. And also for building heat for Unit 4. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Hearing no discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. 2020-243, an ordinance approving payment to Troxel and Company in an amount not to exceed, to be announced, for the property property insurance policy for 39 city Springfield properties for a one-year term for the Office of Public Utilities. Move to debate. Second. It's been moved to second to send 2020-243 onto the council of due pass recommendation for the debate agenda discussion. Alderman Hanauer. Yeah, um, I, you know, this is traditionally a pretty high price contract and uh, uh, I just kind of, I don't like the idea of having to, I'll, I'll go ahead, I know we're in a crunch, but I, I don't like the idea of having to uh, uh, wait until the council meeting to get the numbers. So uh, if we don't get it, if we don't have the numbers next week, early next week, uh, publicized, I'm, I'm sending it back to committee. Because, I mean, this is, we, sh we should have this by now, John. Well, you know, I... I tend to uh, agree with you in some aspects of that, Alderman, but the problem we have isn't that we're not trying to get them. It's just that insurance companies, you know, we've been fighting with them for the last month, but they've been saying we're only doing our June renewables. And now they're doing, they're saying we're doing our July 1st renewables. You guys are done July 14th. We will get to you in time. That, it, that's just what, the way the business operates. We're working with the London markets, we're working with the same markets we all did last year. And we know we had the same predicament last year trying to get the last bits of our insurance coverage in. I, you know, I agree with you that, that if, you know, we're, we're, we've been talking to Troxel about trying to get this as soon as possible, either yet this week or early next week, by Monday or Tuesday, so we have a number for you. Our insurance expires July 14th. So, well, but we, but, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've had another insurance company tell it, call and tell me if we have, if they can get us a number right away. So I would, I'd like to know, I mean, because I'm, we I'm just trying telling throughout you, the world I, to find numbers and this well, is what they're telling us. Uh, you know, to me, this shouldn't wait till, this you is, know, we've been working on this for three months. I understand that. But if, if we had gone out for, it, let, let's say we go out for bid for this, they would have a date, they would have to have it by. And I think that, I think that, you know, I understand they have, you know, with COVID and everything, but we should have this by now. We, we, sh we should have the numbers by now. My experience is that these companies, they, they take each renewal as they come up. They don't go two months out and start giving you numbers for a new renewal. They're working on the renewals that they have due this month and this, you know, July 1st renewals, June 15th renewals as they come up. That's, our, that's the predicament we're in. And, and, you know, even talk to the London market today, and they're saying, we're working on our July 1st renewals. Once those are done, then we'll start addressing your, your needs. Well, I, if, if I don't get them early enough, they'll go back to, they'll go back. Well, that's fine. Then we may have to have a special session because we expired the 14th, and we'll have to have something approved by the 14th. That's fine. Can I add, add just something? Yes. Um, one thing I just want to make sure everybody's aware of, too, is... Uh, that uh, we're not gonna cover 31, 32, or 33 um, because the deductible for those units has, has gone up. There's just no reason for that. So if something were to happen with those units at that point, we, don't, we should be investing any more money in those units, um, especially with the way the market prices have gone. So uh, I just wanna make sure that's clear that, that we're doing that. It's a savings then for, you know, for uh, I guess the, the premium, you know, for the insurance. So that's, that's gonna be a, one positive thing, so. Any further discussion? Doris's hands up. I'm sorry? Doris's hands up. I can't Alderman hear you. Turner's Doris. Got so, oh, so Alderman Turner, go ahead. I, um, yeah, I, um, I appreciate Alderman Hanauer's comments. This is the exact same conversation that we had last year. It's the exact same conversation we had the year before with the exact same answer. So perhaps 
if we were talking about a bid instead of a renewal, we would have a different conversation and a different outcome. I think that is just ridiculous that we are asked to vote on a on approving a payment that we have no idea what that payment is and may not know until I'm hearing Tuesday, which is the day that we're going to vote on it. So I agree with Alderman Hanauer. And uh, again, perhaps if we were talking about a, a bid instead of a renewal, the, conversa the annual conversation would be different. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. Mr. Clerk, did we skip, skip some <coughs> ordinances? No. No. Oh, no. Good. Not that I know. Oh. No. So Going fast, Chuck. Rolling along. I'm doing, I'm doing my best, girls. Rolling along, Chairman. Okay, proceed. Thank you. Public Works 2020 244, an ordinance accepting the lowest responsible bid and authorizing the execution of contract number PW 21 04 12 with Perry Broughton Trucking and Excavating Incorporated to furnish construction on the multi use path along Hilltop Road for an amount not to exceed $534,804 for the Office of Public Utilities. Move or, I'm consent. sorry, Public Works. Entertain a motion. Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and second. We said 2020 244 under the Council with due pass recommendation for the consent agenda. Discussion? Uh, I have a little discussion, probably. You probably anticipated that, Doris, I think. We all did. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this has been a long process for us on Hilltop Road, and I appreciate the mayor and corporation council working to this point. And Nate Bottom, where are you? Uh, this is a big deal for uh, for our ward, and I appreciate the support. So, with that, I ask can for we, you. Can we have a ribbon cutting? <laughs> yeah, and, and everybody can come. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a big deal. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. 2020-245, an ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement with the State of Illinois Department of Transportation for the use of Highway Safety Improvement Program funds for the Walnut Street Corridor from South Grand Avenue to Capitol Avenue, MFT section number 17-00484-00-SP for the Office of Public Works. Entertain a motion. Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and second. We sent 2020 245 under the council to do pass recommendations for the consent agenda discussion. Alderman Hanauer. Uh, Y'all make a motion to adopt a proposed amendment number one. Uh, is, is, there, is there a second on the amendment? Second. 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 It's been moved and second that we amend 2020 245 with the amendment number one. Uh, does everybody have a copy of the amendment? Is there any, is there any discussion on the amendment? Hearing no discussion on the amendment, uh, I'll move. Uh, all those in favor, signify aye. by saying aye. 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 All opposed, aye. the ayes have it. Is there any further discussion? Hearing no, the motion was for consent. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Yes. Sign whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Alderman, can just send so. Um, Director Bottom, when can we expect to see some movement on this project? It is kind of like riding on a, a bumpy roller coaster right now on Walnut Street. Get a lot of complaints about it. So we're shooting for a September letting. It usually takes approximately uh, 40 days for to get all the IDOT paperwork completed. So more than likely it'll be next spring. They'll also order the uh, parts for the traffic signals. There's a lead time of approximately 12 to 20 weeks for traffic signal equipment. So that's not what I wanted to hear, but I guess that's what it's, I'm going to have to have to take. Thank you. Follow-up question, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> All member McMinimum. Nate, does that mean both the uh, road resurface and the traffic signalization changes will be taking place uh, next year? That's what I anticipate. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of 2020-245 as amended. Uh, Signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Clerk. 2020 246, an ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement with and payment in the amount not to exceed $139,734 
Tonight, EA Incorporated for construction engineering services for the Walnut Street Corridor project from South Grand Avenue to Capitol Avenue, MFT section number 17-00484-00-SP for the Office of Public Works. Entertain a motion. Motion and consent. Second. Second. It's been moved and second to send 2020-246 onto the council. to do pass recommendations for the consent agenda discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. 2020-247, a resolution notifying the State of Illinois Department of Transportation that motor fuel tax funds in an amount of $786,092.96 may be used for design and construction engineering services and for the construction of the Walnut Street Corridor Road. Night from South Grand Avenue to Capitol Avenue, MFT section number 17-00484-00-SP for the Office of Public Works. Entertain a motion. Move for consent. Second. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second since 2020-247 under the Council of Due Pass Recommendations for a Consent Agenda Discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. 2020-248, an ordinance approving the final plat for Wyatt City Minor Subdivision for the Office of Public Works. Moved consent. Second. It's been moved to second since 2020-248 on the Council of Pass recommendation for the consent agenda discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. General City Business 2020-249, in order to approving the appointment of Debbie Greenan to the City of Springfield Retired Employees Advisory Commission. Entertain a motion. Move to debate. It's been moved. Is there a second? Okay. It's been moved to second since 2020-249 onto the Council to do pass recommendation for the debate agenda dis discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. 2020-250, an ordinance approving the reappointment of Mark Hemp to the City Springfield Retired Employees Advisory Commission. Move to debate. Next minimum. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second since 2020-250 onto the Council of Pass recommendation for the uh, debate agenda discussion. I got one question, Alderman, Mr. Alderman uh, Gregory. So with these with these appointments that, that we are um, speaking on right now, um, I understand that we have some some other appointments to commissions uh, sort of sort of paused right now um, with with uh, consideration of two ordinances, one um, to live uh, in the city to be on these uh, commissions, and the other one um, no two boards or, or no two commissions. So it, it is is is. Um, are we are we setting a precedence for 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 this one and, and, and not these other? I would I would rather wait and do it all at one time if, if it's appropriate. Bleeding through, look. Did did uh, you hear his question, Corporation? I'm uh, certainly. Uh, the these are independent of the other ordinances. Okay. Um, however, if the uh, these are for the retirement uh, advisory committee, uh, retired employees of the city that serve on that to advise the city council regarding uh, retiree issues. Mm -hmm. uh, the other two ordinances, I think you're referring to further, they certainly would be subject to that okay. if, if those changes are in place. Okay. Uh, so it would really be up to the council whether or not uh, the timing of considering those. Okay, I, I, I don't have a problem. I just want to make sure that we're treating, you know, all of these appointments the same, and um, you know, I, I'm sure they meet the qualifications and, th and things of that nature. But I just want to make sure that we're treating everybody the same, and and making sure that you know, if we're going to hold the others back for um, these two ordinances to be passed to to address things that that um, you know, I, I would like them all to be treated the same. But that's just my opinion. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair. Alderman Hanauer. If, if we... Chair, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, Who's talking? this is Bonnie. Uh, yes, hold on, Bonnie. Uh, Alderman Hanauer is speaking. Hold on. Sorry. That's weird. Go ahead, Alderman. So if we... So next week, if we, if we bring these uh, 52 and 53 forward first... And we vote on those, and those go into effect. Do the other ones have to abide by those at that time? I guess that's my question. Are you referring to 49 and 50? Those are the retiree 
Well, and then any of the other ones that we would vote on after we vote on those two particular ordinances. Well, it would be, technically, it would be in the order they're signed by the mayor after they're approved. Uh, however, uh, the members of the uh, various boards and commissions are going to have to ultimately comply with, if there are changes, for example, residency, or if there's a change regarding serving on another commission or committee. Right. So, so once those are in, it, there's no grandfather or anything like that. I, I, I don't know if those would go, if that question would should they go would, with those. They would apply to um, all new appointees if the mayor signs 52, if those are adopted and, and are executed in order 52 and 53, they're subject to uh, any, any members coming uh, following that are going to be subject to that. You can't retroactively, you know, someone who's already serving on a commission, right. but you're passing these at the same time. If, right. if, for example, 49 and 50, which are the retiree uh, appointments, so uh, if the mayor dis, you know, signs 52 and 53, this happens all the time where you have to sign ordinances in certain order, you know, by way of when they're adopted. So uh, it would be my view that they're going to, provided the mayor signs 52 and 53 regarding residency and then also not serving on another commission, then these individuals are subject to that. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Alderman uh, Proctor. Yeah, uh, Alderman Gregor, I understand that. <laughs> How you doing? What the? What is it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, someone's doing good. Um, I understand your question and concern. I uh, completely agree with you. I made the second on 2020-250, and if I'm allowed, I'll withdraw that second. Just, I just think we need to wait. Yeah, we're just waiting. I think the, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ralph. I, th I think that the, the whole premise was getting these two in place. Yeah. Uh, and I... I, I, I I think the proper protocol is to go ahead and, and pass these on to the debate agenda. And if you want to make uh, a substitute motion when they get to the floor, then we can hold them like we're holding the other ones until we make a decision on how we're going to proceed. That's up to the that's up to the council on how we bring those out. But they're probably most likely going to come out as a group. Am, am I correct on that? I would think. Any any further discussion on that? So. Go ahead, Alderman Proctor. So I'm allowed to withdraw my second, and then someone else has to if second. You, if you withdraw your second, and another second's not made, then the, it'll stay in committee. All right. So my withdrawal is accepted too. Moved. You've accepted. Okay. So I withdraw my second on that one. So if someone else wants. So to So there's a motion pending for 2020-250. Is there a second? Hearing none, that will stay in committee at this time. And then, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, Recall 2020-249. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second to recall 2020-249. Is that a proper motion, Mr. Ch Corporation Council? Um, I think the, uh, the, the proper uh, motion would be a motion to reconsider the vote by which 2020-249 uh, was referred to the debate agenda. Motion like to reconsider to since we're in the same meeting and you voted in the majority, yes. so you may properly make such a motion to reconsider second. since we're in the same meeting. So the motion is to reconsider 2020-249 is seconded by Alderman Donlin. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. Mr. Clerk, will you reread that for consideration? Will do. 2020-249, in ordinance approving the appointment of Debbie Greenan to the City of Springfield Retired Employees Advisory Commission. Is there a motion? Hearing no motion, that ordinance will stay in committee. Uh, Mr. Clerk, read, uh, go to 2020-251. Will do. 2020-251, an ordinance approving appointment of Barb Friesen to the Police Community Review Commission. Is there a motion? Motion to table. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to table ordinance 2020-251. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. Would you like a roll call, Chairman? No, the ayes have it. Next ordinance. 
2020-252, in order submitting Chapter 33, Section 33.002C of the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended pertaining to boards and commissions. Is there a motion? motion for consent. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded since 2020-252 under the Council of Dupass recommendation for the consent agenda. Discussion. A discussion, uh, Mr. Go ahead. Mayor. I'll make men. This is the uh, ordinance which uh, creates a residency requirement for our uh, membership on the boards and commissions. And I've been long in favor of this, and I appreciate Alderman Turner bringing this out for a vote. We tried to accomplish this many years ago and, and could not accomplish this goal. I, I have one concern, though, and that's that I think generally um, governing bodies should not change the rules in the middle of the game. So, for example, when our mayor made nominations, he was complying with the rules that existed at the time he made the nominations. And so uh, those nominations were made in good faith. The uh, nominees accepted the opportunity to serve in good faith. And so I, I understand the motivation between now uh, behind now uh, changing the rules, and I agree that we ought to change rules, but I think we should do it for all nominations which the mayor makes after we change the rules, so that the nominees that have been placed before us should be voted up or down based on the rules that existed when the mayor made the nomination. So when the, the mayor made the nominations that are on, um, in, on our agenda that have been uh, there for some time now. Uh, I think we should vote up or down on those nominees for whatever whatever reasons we want to give for an up or down vote as individuals, but not create a new rule that automatically blocks some of them from consideration. We've got some good nominees there, some maybe, um, maybe not the best nominees. I don't know. I'd like to hear the discussion about each nominee. Uh, I think that, uh, think about if when we run for alderman, when we, we place, when we go out and get our signatures for petition, we think that, that we know the, what the rules are for, for running for office. And how do, we, how do we feel like if after we put our nominations forward to run for office, some other body changes the rules about who can run for office. Now they want you to be a resident for two years in your ward or three years in your ward or six months in your ward. Would we like that? No, I don't think we would. So I think it's just a matter of fair play that um, let's just allow the nominees that the mayor made in good faith uh, to be voted on based on the rules that existed at the time that the nominations were made. And then that means that this particular uh, ordinance that requires residency would be a requirement for any future nominations that the mayor makes next week or after we pass, or ex excuse me, a week from now after we uh, hopefully pass this residency and the double um, position ordinance which follows this one where you can't serve on more than one council or commission at any one time. So I'd like to propose an amendment that basically says that this uh, ordinance is applicable to any nominations made after July 7 by the mayor. The motion on the, the, the motion for the amendment is to to uh, put a date on it, basically. What was the date, Alderman? It'd be, uh, I think we next meet as a council on uh, July 7th. Or is it July 8th? Today's the 1st of July, is it? 7th. 7th. So we next meet on the 7th. So for any nominations made by the mayor on or after July 8th. Does everybody understand the motion for the amendment? Is there a second to the amendment? Is there a second to the amendment? Hearing no second, the motion dies. Is there any further discussion on the ordinance? Just real quick, Mr. Alderman Chairman. Gregory. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I totally respect um, where you're coming from, Alderman McMenamin, and I, I, I think, um, you know, and I. You know, I, I, I've been doing a lot of talking on this, and, and this really has nothing to do with the mayor. It's really about process. Um, and I think any time for a, a good change in process that's going to, you know, add some diversity to our city always has to be made right then and right now. We can't wait. And, um, you know, I, I, 
personally don't know any of these these candidates, but the process of where we're trying to move the city forward, um, I think, has to be changed. You know, immediately as, as as we come across them, it's a little different from running for office, but I definitely understand. Um, you know, I. I had a heck of a run, so so I definitely understand where you where you're coming from with processes and wanting them to be the same and be fair. So I definitely understand that. Um, but I think right here we're in a total different ball game, and um, I think we're in the date and times where, where we got to make sure that that we're making some uh, some some changes that are good. That's going to move our uh, city forward, and you know, and, and and not you know wait on it. Uh, Mr. Chair, discussion. All my minimum. Yeah, I understand your comments, and I would just say this that. And I heard the interview this morning by uh, um, the nominee for the Housing Council, uh, Dean Graven. I heard his interview on one of the radio stations this morning, and wow, what superb qualifications and credentials he had. And he's willing to serve, eager to serve. He's got vast experience, vast knowledge. And so it looks like this process that we're calling a, uh, is really a blocking move. That's the way I think the public will look at this, that we're blocking um, Craven from serving. Because I think basically all the other nominees um, survive this blocking move. And so let's face it, you know, we've been, some of us have been talking about the residency requirement for years and years, but now it's, it only comes to the surface when Craven is is placed in nomination. He's a resident. So, and he's a resident, um, but the next ordinance we're gonna talk about, which I think we'll have, we could have the same discussion with the next ordinance, is to preclude someone from serving on two um, uh, policy-making bodies, and Dean Craven serves on the uh, Zoning Commission. And I understand that uh, maybe we don't want someone to serve on two compensating uh, commissions that serve compensate, that provide compensation. Uh, this would not be the case for Dean Cravens. And I think I wouldn't vote for him to uh, re be renominated if he, I think his term on the Zoning Commission expires next year. And so it's kind of some overlap. I think he wants to be able to have a chance to do some really good things on that Housing Council. He's got the experience for it. And, uh, but he doesn't want to, uh, he, wa he wants to end his service on the Zoning Commission, too, because he served uh, a valuable, in a valuable way there, too. So I, just, I think we're making a mistake here by denying a really quality nominee from serving. And I think for that reason, we're doing our city a disservice. And I think we're doing the Housing Policy Council a disservice, because what we want to do is in the, those areas of town where we have all those vacant lots, and he explained this in the interview this morning, He's done a lot of background research and review with the home builders and the lenders to find out how we can bring development to areas of town that need investment of housing stock. And to deny this guy the ability to serve, I think we're uh, making a mistake. And I, again, we're changing the rules in the middle of the game, I don't whether you're playing basketball, football, or or, or politics, it's, it's just a bad precedent, and it makes our council look not the best, in my opinion. Alderman Turner. Um, I I am dis I'm dismayed that Alderman McMiniman would try to bring personalities and politics into this discussion. I've been on the city on the city council for. Uh, nine years, and previous to that, I served on the Sangamon County Board for 10 years. And since my time on the county board in 2000, I have, I have made it my mission to look to diversify boards and commissions throughout Sangamon County. Um, I, I worked very closely with Chairman Van Meter in order to accomplish that at the county level, and I am excited that I am bringing that same veracity to the city level to uh, affect diversity within boards and commissions. Springfield has over 100,000 people. And my, when I look at boards and commissions, 
unlike Alderman McMenamin, I'm not looking at an individual. My conversation is about the composition of those boards and commissions to ensure the best outcome for the citizens of the city of Springfield. And we cannot have a best outcome unless we have diverse voices at the table. If we continue to have the same people with the same background, who live in the same part of town, who have this, who have the same relationships, we're going to find ourselves spinning our wheels in the same in the same place. I I my I have said from the beginning, I don't have a problem, a personal problem with any of these nominees. I I, I don't even know most of them. My my concern is strictly with ensuring that we have a diverse group of people that are making policy for the city of Springfield. And I think that that is what's getting lost in this whole discussion. The individuals who serve on boards and commissions are making public policy for the citizens of Springfield. So it only makes sense that the people who are making public policy for the citizens of Springfield live within the city of Springfield. I don't care what your name is or where you live, it only or what your qualifications are. It only makes sense. I and um, Alderman McMenamin talks about uh, uh, Dean Graven and his qualifications. I'm familiar with Dean Graven. As a matter of fact, I, I know that he's very interested in housing on the east side of Springfield. Uh, a couple of years ago, I attended a meeting with him and then Alderman Gail Simpson, where he uh, he pitched a proposal to us about uh, a proposal that he had for building houses on the east side of Springfield. So I understand that he has that passion. He has he actually has something in the hopper ready to go. And and that's great. And and he can and I and I'm not saying that he's not qualified. Qualifications aside, we have a hundred thousand people in the city of Springfield. And I'm quite sure that if you pick out any one of the people that are up for nomination, I could find 10 other people that have the exact same qualifications, the exact same background, and, and, will, and have the exact same eagerness and willingness to serve. So my, my uh, bringing this amendment forward, and I do support Alderman DeCenso's amendment that will be coming next. My uh, motive for bringing that, that amendment and supporting Alderman uh, DeCenso's amendment has absolutely nothing to do with personality, has nothing to do with individuals, and it most certainly has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with good public policy that will reflect well on the way that we continue to try to move Springfield forward. Mr. Chair, uh, just real briefly, I just want to point out, Mr. Chair, and, and for the public, that uh, our mayor made some really good nominations, uh, tried to be as diverse as possible. So when the Housing Council nominees first came to the City Council for approval, as I recall, speaking of diversity, just speaking of diversity, as I recall, three of the seven were African Americans. And so then we expanded the uh, Housing Policy Council to a uh, seat number eight. And as I recall, Mr. Mayor, wasn't the eighth seat then filled by an African American? So now we have four out of eight of the Housing Policy Council that are African American, and Alderman Turner is making comments like we need more diversity. And I just find that kind of unusual. Diversity in people. So diversity does not uh, only include race. Uh, I'm, I'm talking uh, about diverse, diversity me. does not only uh, include you know, race. Can, Alderman Turner, please let him finish. Please let him finish. I'll let you speak. I am not a one-trick pony. My job is not to Alderman ensure. Alderman Turner, please, my, not my, order. my job is not to ensure Alderman that Alderman African Turner, Americans off, are on boards and commissions. Diversity relates to age, oh uh, race, geography, educational background, uh, uh, economic Turner, status. It, it runs the gamut. And uh, don't Alderman try to Turner, pigeonhole please. me You're into order, I'm just please. standing up for the black people of Springfield. Alderman McMahon, please finish. So the point I was just trying to make was that I think the mayor's tried to do a good job in getting broad representation on the council. And the other point I was trying to make was that I just think it's a bad idea to change the rules in the middle of the game uh, on the nomination process. And um, lastly, I, I do think Dean Graven is an outstanding nominee, and I'd like to see him get we on get the board. It. So that's, Alderman that's Turner, the now you may speak. I, I think everyone heard what I had to say. Thank you. Alderman DeCenso, you wanted to speak? 
yes. Um, e echoing Alderwoman Turner's statement, we're not talking about diversity just in terms of racial diversity. We're talking in terms of diversity of the city. Um, for instance, Mary Frances was instrumental in getting the Tree Commission passed, yet she's not on the Tree Commission for whatever reason, neither here nor there. I'm just saying there are other people. There, you know, Dean Graven is right now, if we're gonna talk about personalities, right now he's on the Regional Planning and Zoning Commission. He's on the sitting, the city zoning commission, and now he wants to be on the housing commission. So pick, pick a lane respectfully. Um, you know, this isn't about personalities. This is about, that's one person that sh certainly holds a lot of power when it comes to zoning and housing in the city of Springfield, more so than any of us for the most part. So let's, let's, why can't we even it out a little bit? This isn't about Dean Graven, it's about one person who, <coughs> you know, holds a lot of power in a specific area of the city of Springfield. Uh, Mayor Langfelder. Actually, the, uh, You're off. There you actually go. the uh, sounding board, the final decision, the ones with all the power of the city council. As you're doing your hold them in committee, uh, with regards to diversity, we've worked hard on it. Uh, we'll give a report next week that shows the diversity. I think where the diversity is needed is with young people. I think uh, that's why I was excited about the um, the protesters. They had a lot, you know, a lot of young people engaged, and when we started talking about the coronavirus, that's all us older people are saying. Well, how are we going to get the young people? How are we going to convert that, you know, or that message to them? They did it themselves with the protests. So those are the individuals we need to get engaged. And the ones that are the best ones to bring that diversity are the city council members. And so for the last five years, some have brought them forward, some haven't. And, uh, you know, I put forward uh, the best mix possible. I think Dean Graven, and I'm, I'm just going to say this, Dean Graven, uh, because we have made it personal, I'm sorry to say it is personal. I think uh, I think I agree with Alderman McMinimum. I think people don't want to cast a vote. I agree, vote on each and every one of them. Vote them up or down after you pass the residency and you can say, well, that person doesn't live in the city and vote them up or down. I think they deserve that because they've been to this committee uh, numerous times to make that happen and they deserve it. They're all volunteers. And even though I'm in a, um, went ahead and sponsored the residency one, I will say once again, this is totally different from the residency rule of employees. The reason there's a residency rule that I pushed it and why I was successful in pushing it is because 100% plus of our property tax dollars plus sales tax dollars goes to pay the pensions of our employees. The volunteers, they're volunteers. So for me, uh, someone that owns a property in Springfield or, you know, they have an added benefit. Uh, there's um, a, a union member that's the head of Trades and Labor Council. They bring that added skill level to a board that not everybody can bring. And so from that aspect, I think, uh, you know, I went ahead and uh, sponsored it. But there's totally two different aspects with regards to that. But we're striving towards diversity. We've uh, we've done uh, we've improved vastly over previous administrations. I would put uh, the diversity in the city or the um, boards and commissions that I put forward. I can uh, put it's far above any other administration, even my father's. And so from that standpoint, we've worked hard at it. Council members have uh, submitted them, but it's all it's incumbent upon all of us. I think that's where the value of this form of government takes place is because individual constituents are comfortable with their older person. And so it's incumbent upon everybody to make recommendations to Bonnie Drew or to, you know, just have them send in their resume and we'll uh, pass them along as, uh, you know, we can as much as possible. I appreciate everybody's input into this process and hopefully we get this settled once and for all next week because the Housing Policy Council is vastly needed, especially when we're moving on this road to recovery with the coronavirus, we need to start uh, moving that direction. So thank you very much. Anyone else on this ordinance? I just have one comment to make. If we wanna make it equal, we should not be nominating people more than one person or two people from a ward. They should be spread out so each individual ward is represented. That's more a vast representation on the committees. I, I don't care about uh, anything else other than the fact that everybody has a voice. And, and uh, there's probably some wards that don't have people on the boards. So I think that's something we should be considering more than anything else. 
And Chuck, that's why I said that diversity includes geographical location. I, I, I totally agree with you, and that's why every time I talk about it, I say geographical location. And I and thank you for that, Alderman Turner, because I think that's the way we be, should be basing our nominations and our, our selections. Is there any other discussion? Chair? Yes, the go chair. ahead. Uh, chair, Air, I, I, Alderman thank Conley. You. Thank you, Chair. I would just like to say um, I second your your comments there. I think it's um, really important that we make sure that we're spreading our um, representation across the entire city, and I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, all, uh, Bonnie Drew, I apologize I didn't get back to you sooner. I know you've been hanging on the line, so would you please make your comments? I, yes, I would. I would like to share that the mayor has charged me when looking at board members, yes, to look at the individuals that are named. I have a report that I'll share with you folks tomorrow that you will see the diversity across all wards of, of individuals that are serving on our different boards. But when we think of diversity, we think not only of gender, we think of ethnicity. A lot of the things that the uh, that, that Alderwoman Turner just mentioned, uh, for instance, the last person that we named to the Lincoln Library Board, I took a name to the mayor and he said, you know what, we really need a young family on there. So you know what? I went back to the drawing board and I found a young lady uh, who she and her family members use the library. So we really do try to hit all the, the points you guys have just mentioned. It's We don't try to limit it to one ward. We don't try to limit it to one ethnicity or one whatever. We like to look at those that are going to add a passion, a knowledge, an expertise, an interest, a desire, and moving our city forward. And I'll be glad to forward that uh, report to you tomorrow, uh, showing across the wards how many appointments are in each ward. Thank you, Bonnie. And again, I apologize for not getting back to you. Uh, not Mr. a problem, Chair. Sir. Alderman, Alderman Hanauer. Uh, I just have a question. Do we have any type of uh, an attendance policy on the boards? Because I know um, in some boards they, they people get nominated, they never show up. And to me, if they miss so many meetings, they should automatically lose their position on the board and let somebody else in that's going to do it. Um, I, I don't think any of these boards that we have uh, really meet so often that they that they shouldn't, you know, people shouldn't be able to make them. But Is there I, 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 does, do we do we look at the attendance and do we do we kind of track that because if not, maybe we need to need to add something like that down the road. Bonnie, do you know Bonnie? Do you know if there's an attendance criteria? With that, um, yes, we do look at that Alderman Redpath, and we do monitor it. Um, if you will look at the website under the boards and commissions, we do post. The agendas for the meetings, you'll see when they are supposed to meet, uh, what the required meetings are. You will also see the approved minutes that are placed on there. And we are also in the final stages of getting the application online as well. We have been working on that for about the last three months. So we're trying to move everything forward. So anytime any of you have an individual that you would like to to bring forward to us or anyone that expresses an, an, uh, an interest, whether they're in your ward or not. Um, and that is one of the questions on there. Um, are you a city resident? How long have you lived here? And what ward are you in? And what expertise or interest do you bring to the board that you're trying to uh, make application to? Uh, Mayor and then Alderman Proctor. Yeah, answer your question, Alderman. Answer your question, Alderman Hanauer. I'm I don't, I'm not sure if there is a requirement to, I know not across the board, but we can make that happen and uh, set that parameter forward for all the boards and commissions. I don't believe it's in place for all of them. Okay, thank you. Alderman Proctor. Yeah, I feel like we'll de we dealt with the attendance issue a couple years back, but um, Bonnie, as part of your um, report that you're going to give us tomorrow or next week, um, can you include in there which boards and commissions have not met in the last six months? Because I believe sure. I believe there are a number of commissions uh, that members have come to me and said they have not met for a while and they're wondering what's going on. So if you can include that in well, your report, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Anyone else Chair, on this? Uh, Alderman Metamon. You know, this is a good discussion because we all want the same thing. We want good participation. We've got so many qualified individuals in our city willing to serve. We've got so many goals and purposes to attain. And I just want to commend Bonnie Drew because when I think about what we're asking you to do, it's almost like mission impossible because um, for example, with regard to the Housing Policy Advisory Council, which was the mayor's initiative, um, the mayor wanted broad, um, diversified representation from the very get-go because the uh, requirements are to have one uh, representative represent home builders, one for realtors, one for banking and finance, one for, uh, from a tax increment financing district, one from an inner city older neighborhood association, and then uh, later on, I think one amendment was made during the approval process to add a position, I think inner city older neighborhoods, and then after we passed the ordinance, there was a, a wish to add another seat, which the mayor accommodated. But so then on top of all those um, industry sector requirements, you know, we've got age we want represented, differ, diversified age, we want gender, we want race, we want ward representation. So I'm, I'm saying it's, it's a really complex expectation we're, put on, we're putting on poor Bonnie Drew to make everybody happy here. Um, and I, I hope we can achieve what we all want, which is uh, very well-functioning boards and commissions and I support this ordinance, which Alderman, Alderwoman Turner is, is uh, sponsoring, which I co-sponsored co with, the, with the mayor, to have a, going forward, having a residency requirement for our boards and commissions. And I hope everyone votes yes. Is there any other discussion on this ordinance? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. Mr. Clerk. 2020-253, an ordinance amending Chapter 33, Section 33.002 of the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended pertaining to boards and commissions. Motion. Motion for consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we send 2020-253 onto the Council with the due pass recommendation for consent agenda discussion. Mr. Chair. Alderman McMinimum. Now, this is a good faith question. Um, so we've got some of these commissions out there, like the zoning, the uh, the, the regional planning uh, commission, which uh, myself and Alderman Proctor serve on, and we've got the uh, health committee commission, which true, that's Board kind of, of part of county government, it's part of city government. But this council makes the nominations to serve on those boards. So going forward, are we saying we don't want? Alderman to serve on the Zoning Commission. We don't want no. Alderman to serve on the Health Department Advisory Committee. That's my question. Good faith question. Any other discussion? Alderman DeCenso. No, that's not what we're saying. We want representation on the county boards. What we're saying is that, or what I'm saying, is that for the Springfield, City of Springfield Boards and Commissions, you get one, you get to serve on one of those, period. If, if people have other interests or if they want to, you know, if they're, I think we have one nominee that's moving from historic sites to economic development, um, that, that's fine. That, that works. But to have multiple people serving or to have one person serving on multiple boards when we have so many people to choose from, people who are volunteering, just seems silly to me. Let's let's get more people involved, more people at the table. That's what we want, a bigger tent. Alderman Turner. Also, uh, to speak to the good faith question, if you look at the uh, the templates for those those county boards or commissions, they mandate that they require an order an order person to serve on those boards or commissions. So. That's the, the county mandating the makeup of their board and commission, and they say that they have a spot that is required for an alder person. So that's, that's due to the makeup of that board or commission. Any further discussion? Well, uh, that's fine if we want to go in that direction, but in fact, though I can't speak for the health committee, but I think it's probably the same way, it's probably the same way as the Zoning Commission. That's an intergovernmental 
board that's controlled not exclusively by the county board nor exclusively by the city. Um, there's an executive board that serves, which is represented by both the city and the county, and that's how uh, those uh, boards are composed, by a combined intergovernmental agreement between the two bodies. So it's, we can't say, well, we can't do anything about that because it's the, the county board of Van, uh, Van Meter that controls that. No, it's, it's our mayor and Van Meter and the executive well, committees. Alderman Turner. Well, Joe, if you, if you like, if, if you think that it's a conflict of interest, then what I would suggest you do is the next time that intergovernmental agreement comes up, that you request that they remove the representation of an alderman on that board or commission. And, then, and that, would, that, that would satisfy the concern. Again, my point is just to raise the question so we know what we're passing tonight so that we well, understand. I think everybody knows what we're passing, but you, 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 what you're trying to do, and, and I'm trying to be very respectful, what you're trying to do is continue a, a an argument that really has no basis for continuation. So we just need to move on because I, if, if you don't want an older person to serve on the Regional Planning Commission That's next not time we an intergovernmental agreement, ask that that provision be removed. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to get the intent of the council, that's all. Call so, the I, any, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, aye. the ayes have it. Is there any unfinished business to come before the com uh, committee? Uh, I do have some unfinished business I'd like to address, Mayor. Um, as you know, with the corona stuff, we've uh, gotten behind on a few things. There's, uh, I understand, 80 liquor licenses pending, uh, and we can't get those folks in. Is there a way that we could set up some way for those? They have to come in to get their paperwork so they can go get fingerprinted, and they're being held up because we can't do that. Is there a way we could set something up maybe in the Hall of Fame office downstairs in the main lobby so those folks can come in, we can get that thing rolling? Um, yeah, I, uh, this is the first I've heard of it. So I guess, are they selling liquor? Are you saying <laughs> 80 people without oh, licenses? 80, <laughs> I mean, really, what they should do is to Todd uh, Oliver, we, we'll, we'll take behind. care of it. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, personally, I think uh, we'll take care of it tomorrow. Yeah, it, it, it's... Uh, I, I mean, I think really what it comes down to, and this goes for any business, any government, to use the coronavirus to, as a excuse, not to provide services is totally ridiculous. Yeah. Wait, Mayor, you're I, missing I, my point. That's what I'm saying. You're missing I mean, my so point. So if there is 80 licenses, and I'm the liquor commissioner, and nobody calls me up and tells me that, I mean, that's totally ridiculous. Well, you better talk to Todd Oliver because that's where I got the information from. Well, I don't, I don't City Hall is open as far as I know. I think no. that's what's been the frustration in all of this is, uh, you know, it's just, it's, yeah, we'll take care of it. All right. So That's tomorrow all you asking. have each one of them call my office so I can get their name <laughs> and uh, business, and well, we'll take care of it. Hey, you're, you're attacking the wrong guy here. I wasn't attacking you. No, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm just you're saying the that if, you're the messenger, if, there's right? a, if there's a clog in the wheel, Mayor, <laughs> I'm just trying to get the, the clog out of the well, wheel. We're just trying to get it. That's why I don't believe in filters, you know, no go-betweens. You need something done. Uh, I called a woman to send, so uh, uh, Bandy, I think... Brandy, Brandy Tully, I think was the individual that Brandy, needed help. Yes. Brandy, yep. And so I was able to call her, uh, thanks to Nate uh, Bottom and all the women just so. But that's what it takes is, you know, sometimes things get bottlenecked because they don't go straight to the source and can unclog it. So when it's dealing with a liquor license, I think there's only one liquor commissioner, and I don't think his name's Todd Oliver. I well, think look, it's Jim Langfelder. So I, they just need to come straight either, to the I'm mayor's office. I'm not trying office. to do that. And uh, this listen. is for everybody, for the media to put out there. If someone's not getting the service that they think they deserve, call the mayor's office at 789-2200 because we're here to serve the public. Who do they ask for? We'll take the information and we'll get to the bottom of it. All right. Thank you. That's Thank all you. I'm asking you to do, Mayor. Thank you. Any other, any other unfinished business? Is there yes. I'm sorry. Alderman yes. DeSenso. Uh, Mayor, thank you very much for making that phone call today. I know I appreciate it, and I know Brandy appreciates that. So thank you very much. Um, uh, and second, I'm going to be a Karen here and complain about the fireworks again. 
I mean, it is all night, every night. I already heard one. I heard one at 538. I wrote it down. And they go on till about four in the morning over here. Um, we have provided addresses of where these are being shot off. It is all over the city. It is not just in Ward 6. And for veterans with PTSD, this is an issue. For pet owners, for kids, parents with young children, I understand it's the 4th of July on Saturday, but this has been going on for a month. Can we please try to do something about these fireworks? Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Uh, maybe Alderwoman Turner can weigh in on this. When I was on the county board way back when, uh, that's when they outlawed the sale of fireworks. I mean, firecrackers, things of that nature. You could do sparklers, I think, and just uh, some okay. menial ones. But uh, I guess, uh, do you know Alder Woman Turner? And I've been trying to get this through the uh, police department, the sheriff's department, the answer. And isn't, I think it's still illegal to sell fireworks of that magnitude that all the women DeCenso is talking about in the county. I think it might it be is. illegal throughout the state of Illinois, unless they it changed is. it. It is. There, it's a state law. And it's the, a state of, law. It's a state law. So that's the, uh, well, we'll have to follow that up because uh, I think the stands, I'm not sure if they're in the city or if they're in the county. But uh, we got a list of, of stands in the county today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's only four on the list. Yeah. And one person owns two. So there's actually only three owners. Because with the amount of fireworks, because this is uh, just now where all the women in is living. I've heard it. Uh, they're out in my area, all over the city. And so there's not that many people driving to St. Louis and buying those fireworks and bringing them back. Nope. And even if they do, right. I'm not sure if that's legal. I don't know if you can do that. So we'll follow up with the police department and sheriff's department and see uh, what can be done. We're going to have to hire a lot more people if we're going to track all them babies down. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mayor, I hope you're complaining to your aldermen. Yeah. I think you just heard me. I'm I invited him over for the fireworks <laughs> display at my house. <laughs> Any other uh, unfinished business? Alderman Turner. Okay, so um, I had the... Alderman McGregor had to take a sip of my Pepsi when, when <laughs> Alderman DeCenso said she was going to be a Karen. I didn't know what was getting ready to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure what was getting ready to happen. Either Karen anyway, or Tammy Faye. <laughs> but um, I had an issue over the weekend, and, and I emailed the mayor. He, took, he was very quick to weigh in on it and went right to... Uh, taking care of it. So I do want to say thank you very much. I think that um, we always complain about things, but I do want to say thank you that um, you you really made my you made my day. We'll wait to make sure it follows through, right? <laughs> Don't get on the fall through. <laughs> <laughs> and we're meeting on it tomorrow. <laughs> Any other unfinished business? Any new business come for the committee? Alderman sure. Conley. Thank you, sir. Um, I would just like to make an announcement. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen United We Pipe in the news over the last couple of months. It's a father-son bagpiping duo. They've been raising money for the uh, United Central United Way of Central Illinois' COVID-19 response. Um, they're actually doing a performance tonight at a nursing home in my ward. So um, we, we tried to get that scheduled for earlier in the day, and unfortunately, I had to miss seeing them. But they will be playing tomorrow. Uh, no, sorry, not tomorrow, Friday, um, in a, uh, a Facebook Live event for with our sister city in Japan. Um, and that will be, you can find them on Facebook on United We Pipe. It starts at, I believe, 7 o'clock this Friday. Um, so I'd like to thank our sister city association for, for setting this up for them. It, it's a nice way to maintain this connection while we've got um, travel obviously limited and uh, you know, I would encourage you to go and look, check out their Facebook page and, and just some of the really positive fun they've brought to our community while we've had some, you know, less fun days. Um, and also, I'd like to thank them for being out at the um, the Fair Hills, uh, First Presbyterian Fair Hills Retirement Home tonight. Um, I understand they're having scones and watching watching the bagpipers, and they brought a, a dancer with them, too. So um, that should be fun. But anyway, thank they, you, Chair. They actually they actually played at the Black Lives Matter candlelight vigil, and yes, they were they, did. they they were very nice. I really enjoyed them. Alderman DeSento. 
Um, I would like to personally, and from all of us, I'm sure, thank the first responders uh, that were on the scene at the um, Bun tragedy, as well as the Springfield Mass Transit District, um, Magro's Meets, everyone that was involved in um, the awful events of Friday. I really want to thank everybody for um, you know what what could have been what much worse and the quick response and um, it's just it, it for for what happened. I think everyone deserves, um, you know, a huge thanks for the role they played on Friday. Agreed. Ditto. Yes, thank you, Kristen. Okay, is there any citizens request to address the, uh, hold on, Mayor, go ahead. Yeah, the, uh, speaking to that, there is a vigil tonight at Centennial Park at 7 o'clock, and I believe there's one at Bond tonight at 8.30. Thank and you, as Mayor. a reminder, the uh, city will be closed Friday for the 4th of July holiday. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, is there any citizens to address the committee? Yeah, Chairman Dean Graven actually signed up. I don't know if he's still. Uh, Tom, do you have uh, do you have anybody there to address the committee? Take that as no, but I don't have anybody logged in uh, that that uh, had signed up. Okay. Okay. The next one was Michael Higgins. So if he doesn't have, is Michael Higgins waiting on the line? No, sir. Okay. And the last one is Buzz. Buzz? Buzz who? <laughs> is that Buzz Light here? <laughs> Sorry, Daryl. Buzz is not uh, logged in either. All right. Uh, no executive session? No, sir. Uh, again, uh, we ask everybody to uh, remember the, the victims of the Bun tragedy in your prayers and um, in... Uh, for a sad time. Thank you. Um, anything else? Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank aye. you. Thank you, everyone. Keep smiling, baby. <laughs>